Today's video has been sponsored by Noom. For a large percentage of my life, I was not the biggest fan of sushi. I felt like avocado didn't really sit well with me. I saw a lot of stories in the news that made me leery. But recently, my boyfriend kind of forced me to reacquaint myself with sushi, and over the past few months, I have become absolutely obsessed. And at some point throughout that process, I had the very naive thought that there's not too many components going on here. I wonder if I could make this. So today, I'm giving myself 24 hours to go from noobish beginner to expert, or something that's at least edible, in making traditional, authentic Japanese sushi. Let me get a prayer hand emoji in the chat, please, and let's get right into this one. I feel like there's really two outcomes here. I might be able to get something decent by the end of this. You know, I've gotten pretty good at more technical skills over the years. Or this can be an absolute bloodbath, considering how much I struggled with a fried egg last week. Either way, before I can dip my toes in the water today, I gotta give a shout out to my friends over at Noom. Over the years, it has been no secret that I have struggled with weight and overall health because of these videos and just life. But recently, Noom has become my saving grace, my partner in crime, if you will, in helping me get back to a healthy lifestyle. Noom offers psychology-based curriculum and arms you with the tools and confidence you may need to achieve your goals on and off the scale. I absolutely love the food and exercise trackers to help better your relationship with food and increase your motivation. And perhaps my favorite part of Noom, or at least the thing that helped me change my behavior the most, were definitely the Noom lessons. They really get into the details of things that you may not think of as having huge impacts on your day-to-day -day health. I loved the ones about unprocessing your diet and breaking negative behaviors. Because Noom knows what's most important is arming yourself with the knowledge of the science of why things work the way they do. That is what's most likely to cause long-term, sustainable, and positive behavioral change. And underneath it all, I think it's a huge deal knowing that you've got a buddy there to help track your progress, whether that's your meals or your steps. It's just really nice to have, in my opinion, and it helped keep me motivated. So if you are curious as to what Noom can do for you, click the link in the top line of the description, go to noom.com slash David Seymour, get your free Noom evaluation. It's it's quick and easy, and it is what helps Noom create your custom plan. And of course, thanks so much to Noom for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so for our beginner entry-level sushi, we are gonna make some crab and avocado rolls. You will need some nori sheets and imitation crab meat, some sushi rice, and an avocado. And helping me create my first ever sushi roll, let me introduce you to the sushi bazooka. Listen, sushi is a food that chefs take years, if not decades, of their life to learn how to make properly and master. And I am just a home-cooked noob, so don't hate on me wanting to give myself some training wheels to start with. This thing is really bizarre looking. It comes in five different pieces. The instructions were not in English, so the only reference I have as to how to use this is the video I've been showing you. And apparently, it's as easy as prepping up your ingredients, in this case, my avocado, loading in some rice on both halves of the contraption. This is a very basic, lightly seasoned sushi rice I whipped up just for this video. You have to use this cylindrical plunger corer to kind of form the interior of the roll. Trim down your imitation crab logs to perfectly fit in there, as well as your avocado. And then pop that baby closed, screw in the plunger on one end, and give birth to your first ever sushi roll. If all else fails, at least this will be like a good kitchen gadget test, so you guys know if this will ever be worth buying. I got this for like seven bucks on Amazon. And at first glance, this did not look very promising. I thought it was gonna completely fall apart. But it's nothing a little cosmetic touch-up can't fix, so I tried to roll the cylinder onto the nori. Slice it up into eight even pieces. Does this look like a 15 to $20 roll that you would get from a good local Japanese restaurant? Absolutely not. I'm sure many of you out there would just get up and leave <laughs> if you were ever served this in a sushi restaurant. But for my first roll of all time, it could look worse, so let's give it a shot. Listen, I know a lot of you guys are gonna hate. Why are you using that stupid dollar store contraption? But this looks like sushi to me. Maybe at an all-you-can-eat buffet, and I'm not sure <laughs> where the crab in this one went, but it looks like sushi. I mean, it's certainly not bad. It's not a whole lot going on in there, but I like it. It tastes fine. I do like imitation crab meat. If you don't know, it's just like a processed white fish, I believe. The rice is a little bland. Uh, it could use some eel sauce or uh, soy sauce, as I have here. Hmm. My expectations were quite low going into the beginning of this, but this is better than I thought I would start with, so I'm pretty optimistic now. 
Next up today, for level two, or our intermediate course, we've got Joshua Weissman's Vegetarian Tamaki Hand Rolls. And you will need some sushi rice and soy sauce, some seasoned rice vinegar and salt, nori sheets and kombu, some water and portobello mushrooms, an avocado, Thai basil, an English cucumber and scallions, white sugar, some shallots, and some fresh cilantro and mint. I figured this would be the perfect intermediate challenge for today, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's a hand roll, so you keep it together and you eat it like a little burrito, almost. You don't have to worry about cutting them perfectly to size and the final presentation. It's pretty easy in that regard. And also, there's a much lower risk for foodborne illnesses compared to most other rolls because it's vegetarian and it's got no raw fish or meat. Obviously, you can still get sick from produce and other stuff, but you know what I mean. I started by prepping up the nori sheets. We're only gonna be using half of each sheet, as well as the cucumber and avocado to fit within those sheets. I then got the mushroom sliced up and seared off. Disclaimer that I didn't realize until it was too late. You're cooking mushrooms that contain a lot of water in an extremely hot pan with very hot oil. I didn't catch it on camera, but this thing splattered all over the place. I thought it was gonna start a fire. And of course, things are hot, so like, watch what you touch. You also have to whip up the herb salad containing equal parts of the Thai basil, cilantro, and mint. I couldn't help myself but to break down some of the larger leaves, just to try to get everything kind of uniform in here. And lastly, we have to thinly slice up a bunch of shallots. I used a mandolin. If you do, wash your fingertips. And fry them in some oil until they get nice and crispy and golden brown. As I was remaking this and following along with Joshua's video, I took a peep at his comments and I started cackling. I feel like every single video Joshua posts, half the comments are like this. I don't know why such a high proportion of his viewers seem to have such a disdain for him. Anyway, once you've got your crispy shallots seasoned up with some salt, the only component left to make, perhaps the most important one, is the rice. As with all Joshua recipes that include rice, we are gonna use a rice cooker. He kinda tells you to go kick rocks if you don't have one. Maybe that's one of the reasons comments, like we just discussed, show up in his comment section. But it is the easiest and most foolproof way of making perfect rice, at least in my experience, so you gotta give him that. Just get your rice washed thoroughly till the water runs clear, load the rice cooker with equal parts rice and water, whip up the rice seasoning mix, which is just the rice vinegar, salt sugar, and the kombu, and very gingerly kind of splatter your seasoning mix over the rice, give it a good mix, make sure it is tasty and seasoned well. And finally, now is the time that we get to throw all these components together. I'm gonna give myself a couple of chances here until I think I got something presentable. And this first attempt wasn't terrible, but it was not the one either. The rice was a little bit too thick of a layer. I didn't cover enough of the nori, so it was only like half of the sushi with rice. So I adjusted accordingly for the next attempt, and honestly, you guys could tell me if I'm wrong, but I think this looks pretty good. It looks very similar to Joshua's. In an effort to avoid being here all day, trying to get perfection, let's just give this one a try. Feels sacrilegious to just like, <laughs> take a big chunk of this. Mm. This is super good. It is very fresh, it's very tasty. I don't think I nailed the rice. It feels like it's missing something. I'm allowed to dip it in a little soy sauce, right? I don't think that's breaking any rules. I like it a lot. I mean, a traditional sushi chef might spit in my face and throw it against the wall and tell me it's terrible, <laughs> but I mean, it's really tasty. It doesn't look horrendous. I am pretty nervous for this last one though. Let's see how my newfound skills can translate. And for the last course, our final expert level of the day, it is Chef Masaharu Morimoto and his spicy salmon rolls. You will need some kewpie mayo and sashimi grade salmon, some sushi rice and nori sheets, seasoned rice vinegar and sriracha, salt, black and white sesame seeds, dried kombu, water, some sugar and green onions. All right, peeps, this is for all the marbles. This is the one I've been kind of dreading and scared of. For starters, I have never prepared and served raw sashimi fish like this. I don't know what I'm supposed to be looking for. It was incredibly expensive and came from a really reputable Asian grocery store near me. So I'm assuming as long as there's no off smell or colors, it should be fine. And also, is today the day I'm finally gonna be able to put this rice saga behind me 
and not have to rely on a rice cooker or my mother to make me rice. If you are new here, I have been cursed with rice making in a normal pot like this. I don't know what it is, but I either scorch it until it's black or open the lid before it is done even a little bit. I followed Chef Morimoto's recipe exactly, bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer for 15 minutes, and then just leave it on the heat for another 10. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, did we finally get it? I think so. I think the bottom was a little bit golden. I'll be able to see better in a second after I make up the sushi zoo. The rice seasoning was the only thing that Masuharu do not give any measurements for, so I'm just gonna assume it's very similar to Joshua's, but by the looks of the video, just with a little extra sugar and salt. And when I combine the two together, yeah, there's definitely a little crispy layer at the bottom of the pan, but I'll just avoid that. If I was making some other dishes out there that purposely call for a bottom crispy rice layer, this might be perfect. But unfortunately today, I have to leave it behind in the pot. All that's left to do now is to whip up our spicy mayo, which is two parts of the kewpie to one part of the sriracha. Feel free to adjust if you like it more or less spicy. And then just chop up our scallions and it is time to assemble. I don't know if I ever told you guys this, but whenever I'm making challenging foods like this on camera, I get this weird, like, excited, like, stressful anxiety feeling. It feels like I'm about to go on stage for my band concert in high school. Because I want to do well. Like, I've been at this for a while, so I should be able to make a half-decent looking sushi roll. And also because I spent over $100 on some of this stuff and I don't want it to go to waste, too. My first roll attempt, let's just say, was lackluster. I tried to mimic the motions that Chef Morimoto was using when he was spreading the rice and using the bamboo mat. The nori was too big, so that kind of messed things up. The rice was very uneven, but it's no big deal. Let me just reset and get ready to try this again. I tried to get the rice as evenly as possible. I tried to position the fish so perfectly interlocked that it could not squirm out of the sides and would maintain an even thickness throughout. I also sharpened my knife to hopefully make it easier to cut the pieces at the very end. And guys, for being less than 12 hours into learning and only on my fifth roll, I'm feeling like a little proud of myself. Until of course this video goes up and half of you tear me to shreds. But for right now, the rolls look super even. I tried to plate them nicely with some more of the sriracha mayo underneath. I'm scared to say anything else past what I have already as to not jinx it, but let's give this guy a taste. Ugh. Sushi making is stressful, man. Ugh. I didn't think it'd be this <laughs> labor intensive and stress inducing. My back's cricked. I feel like it's a race against the clock when you're trying to form it and the nori is like absorbing moisture and harder to work with. All the respect in the world to every single sushi chef out there. This is not easy. Mmm. This is a perfect example of why I've been so obsessed with sushi recently. There are a few things in the world that are as good as a fresh piece of salmon or tuna like this. It's so buttery and tasty. The rest of the roll is amazing too. The extra sugar and salt in the rice, I think really took it up another notch. Obviously love green onions and spicy mayo. Not that I need to tell you guys this, but be honest with me in the comments and let me know uh, how you think this came out. Cause I'm kind of proud of this. In less than 24 hours, I didn't think I'd get to this point. I did spend like over $80 on fish. Overall, I would say very successful experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave me a big old like. Let me know which difficult food you'd like to see me try to learn in less than 24 hours next time. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram if you do not already. It's David underscore Seymour one. Thank you so much to Noom for making this video possible. Other than that, have a fantastic weekend and I will see you right back here next time. Peace. With the M, M without the A, D Flipping burgers and my money, super lazy Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me Try and supersize my life with my A-team Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision